When I heard about a social enterprise dedicated to the food of the gods, I knew I had to check it out. So here we are at Chocasol. It's a social enterprise and learning community that makes artisanal chocolates using sustainably sourced ingredients and alternative technologies. That's just part of the story. Let's go check it out. Bit. How, how did this start? What inspired this whole thing? So I was working in 2002 with a, a deprofessionalized intellectual and nomadic storyteller, an indigenous man from southern Mexico named Gustavo Esteva. Gustavo invited me to Mexico to work with him and his communities uh, using a prototype solar technology that was part of my master's in environmental studies. So I went down to Mexico, drove down in a Volkswagen van with a solar concentrator strapped to the roof, and one of the families, indigenous families uh, from the communities in where I was living near Gustavo had a grandmother, her name was Doña Jacinta, and she was a curandera, like a homeopath of the village. And she asked me if I could use the solar concentrator to roast her great-grandmother's traditional Christmas chocolates. Mm -hmm. And so we went and sourced the ingredients in the traditional market and we found the cacao and the white cacao and the almonds and all these different ingredients. We brought them back, she taught me how to toast them on the traditional comal, and then I replicated that in the solar roaster. Made chocolate, I didn't actually particularly like the taste of it though. The process though was fascinating. These hard beans go in, this liquid came out, and everyone I shared the chocolate with was totally enchanted. Eight months later, I was still making chocolate. And I was using the bicycle technologies, the solar technologies, and a lot of other ecological technologies and techniques that were interesting to the research we were doing in the making of that chocolate. And that's when the idea of Chocolate Soul really came in. You know, that's when it was like the light bulb went on and we realized, hey, this could be more than just an exercise of applying the technology. In fact, instead of trying to sell technological solutions, we could have the chocolate as a delicious, nutritious invitation to engage in something that's supporting research into sustainable uh, technology, sustainable farming, and ethical sourcing and healthy foods. That's great. So, and so chocolate is, is essential to that social mission that you have right now. It, it, ironically enough, it didn't start out that way, but it became, it, that. it became that way. So chocolate is not our panacea. We don't think chocolate will solve every world, all the world's problems. But what we do see is that chocolate is, is a very powerful ecological health and social product. It's uh, associated with rainforests because it grows in the shade and it grows in traditional polycultures known as the Mayan forest garden. It's small plot intensive agriculture that puts more carbon and more nitrogen into the soil while at the same time providing food sovereignty and education and habitat. And on the other hand, when it's prepared properly in the traditional ways, it's not a candy that rots your teeth. It's good for your heart. It's good for your mind. It's good for your bones. If, you're, if you use it properly, it's a gastronomic spice, not un, unlike saffron. So we don't say that chocolate's gonna solve the world's ills. We just say that the world's ills are gonna be a little less depressing after you've had a good sip of dark chocolate or a good bite of dark chocolate. I have to agree with you. So tell me, where do you source the beans? So we have a very unique way of sourcing our beans, which we call horizontal trade. So we work with 20 different uh, civil society and social enterprise organizations in Southern Mexico and now even in the Dominican Republic. And all of those relationships are based in, in a face-to-face -face understanding. So fair trade organic is a great step. It's a step in the right direction. Right. But how do you go beyond that? So to solidarity, to interculturality, to reciprocity. How do you get beyond the condescending idea that here we are in the developed world helping the poor natives by making them go through all these certification, certification processes? So by cutting out a lot of the middlemen and going direct to the farmers and working with those farmers and bringing seedlings to the farmers, we're able to, we've been able to establish a network of almost 700 small plot intensive agri indigenous agricultural connections in Southern Mexico. Primarily forest gardens, cacao, organic coffee, vanilla, achiote, allspice, cinnamon. So we're not 
chocolatiers, we're not chocolate melters. Chocolate Soul are actually chocolate producers. We make chocolate fresh from the bean and get it out to our communities here in Toronto. Uh, what's interesting about our cacao varieties is we have over 20 different varieties that we make, uh, that we bring in from southern Mexico to make our chocolate. Uh, chocolate is a uh, luxury. It's a beautiful food that we can enjoy and it is healthy, you know, when you're making it properly, when you're not over refining it, when you're not adding fillers and preservatives and things to spread it out thin. It's good for you. Absolutely. Our product line is very accessible, so there's uh, no dairy in our product, there's no soy, there's no general no allergens unless you're actually aller allergic to cacao or chocolate. Right. Part of what we do as well with the eating chocolate is we really want to present it as a fresh product. So chocolate tends to be warehoused and produced in mass uh, on an industrial scale to be you know, stored and distributed for years. That's why they're full of filler, that's why they're full of preservatives, because they want that shelf life, they want the candy bar, quintessential little candy bar wrapper, so that they can just do it without lo looking back. Whereas chocolate, chocolate soul is really focused on integrating the local community, the local food scene, the local farmers markets for a distribution network to get the chocolate to people fresh. And it's a whole different experience, you know, when you try this fresh chocolate, it has so much vibrancy on the palate, so much flavor and it's just a whole other experience. What about that one? Um, this one is, par is particularly interesting, it's called Aztec Blood. It's a traditional uh, Mesoamerican style stone ground dark chocolate, a Mexican style dark chocolate. And what is Mexican chocolate? It is drinking chocolate. It's chocolate, it's a solid piece of chocolate. And we are gonna whip some of this up in uh, the bicycle blender. The bicycle blender? That's right. What's the bicycle blender? Uh, it is a wonderful contraption, one of the many pedal power machines that we've developed over the years to produce and uh, process the raw materials that come out of the forest gardens of southern Mexico that we work with. So uh, our bicycle blender is also a bicycle stone grinder. So it, it is a piece of machinery that offers us an off-grid opportunity to produce food and chocolate specifically. Uh, without any kind of ecological footprint. Now just tell me, what is the, the vision of this? It's a learning center as well as social enterprise. It's, it's, how, what's your vision for So it? the Chocolate Solistas are a unique group. We have an animator approach. Each member of that team is using the work as a creative vehicle for what they're wanting to learn more about. So we've got naturopathic people here. We've got vegans. We've got chefs. We've got technologists. You know, each member of the team finds more sustainability in the work because they're able to use the work creatively as a vehicle for the things that they're passionate about in a holistic sense. And we've grown in a very organic way without any kind of big funds and, and financing or chemical financing as we, we call it. And we've, gr we've had to, to sometimes prune some of the branches from which we got our first fruit in order to attain higher levels of, of quality and organization. So we're a learning community social enterprise that will be celebrating 10 years from the conception of the idea this September.